Does your lens focus fast enough for wildlife action? Are you sure? Do you know how to maximize the potential of any lens for action, regardless of autofocus speed? Steve from Backcountry Gallery here, and this time around, let's talk about the realities of AF speed. One thing I hear on a regular basis is that lenses with slower autofocus speeds aren't capable of photographing faster targets, usually birds in flight. The assumption being that the bird is flying faster than the lens can move the focus ring to keep up. In short, it's outrunning the focal plane. But is that really the case? I think we should test it. So for this test, I decided to time the AF speed from 3 meters to 33 meters and average out just how fast the focal plane was moving through the scene. This would give us an idea of just how fast an object would need to move in order to outrun a lens's ability to keep up, assuming everything else was perfect, and we'll get into that. I chose a closer range since that's where our lens focuses the slowest, and I used the Nikon 180-600 since, although it's a fantastic lens, our earlier speed tests have shown it's not the fastest focusing lens in the lineup with a minimum focus distance to infinity speed of 0.8 seconds. Just for reference, here's my testing methodology. You can pause to read if you like. As it turns out, it takes the 180 to 600 0.583 seconds to run from 3 meters to 33 meters. Translation, the focal plane is moving at an average of 115 miles per hour or 185 kilometers per hour through that range of the seat. Obviously, this is more of an average since the speed isn't going to be precisely the same along that entire 30 meter run. It was slower during the first 10 meters, probably about those stated numbers in the middle 10 meters and likely faster than my estimated speed for the last 10 meters. And of course, that speed continues to skyrocket by orders of magnitude as you head out towards infinity, leaving our close range numbers in the dust. So the bottom line is basically this. In order for a target to outrun the focus speed of this particular lens, it would have to be moving directly towards the camera at faster than 115 miles an hour to do it at relatively close range. So unless you're trying to photograph peregrine falcons diving for a pigeon taped to your forehead, this lens can probably handle pretty much any wildlife target you throw at it, assuming it's maintaining a solid focus lock. And again, I want to emphasize this is directly at, or I guess technically away from the camera, it works either way. Now, if you're shooting a target going side to side in front of you, this is really a non-issue because there's not that much difference in distance. The same applies to a large extent to targets that are coming in at an angle. And of course, if the target is farther out, the lens is moving the focal plane much, much faster through the scene. This was basically a worst case scenario kind of thing because we did it at close range. And the 180 to 600 isn't even a particularly fast lens, so these speeds would be even higher for faster glass. Of course, there are other factors that come into play, like how well the camera is tracking the subject, how fast the camera's processor is making decisions, how fast the communication is between the lens and the camera, how fast the lens is reacting to all those changes, and all those sorts of things. So it's not maybe a perfect test. Still, I think it shows that for the most part, with a typical subject, the biggest problem isn't really the speed that the lens is focusing. Now, I'm not saying it's never a factor because, you know, it can be. I just don't think it's the juggernaut many people assume that it is. So, why do we often get in trouble with slower focusing lenses and what can you do about it? I think there are generally two major areas where we see issues, initial lock on and losing the target slash hunting. Let's start with initial lock on. Often when we spot a random bird flying by, our lens is focused at a significantly different distance. This means that we have a long moment while the lens goes from wherever the distance it was focused at to the distance of our target. Faster focusing lenses can make this feel almost instantaneous. Slower glass can make it feel like it's taken a lifetime to get there. In addition, since a slower lens takes a moment longer to latch onto our target, we have a greater chance of not keeping the AF system on point as we wait for our feathery friend to snap into focus. This puts us at a disadvantage since most AF systems are designed to help you keep the lock once it's established. And they typically do this by either chasing the subject around the frame or at least pausing for a moment before giving it up if you happen to wander off target. However, until you actually have a solid lock, those little AF helpers are not in play, making it easy to almost get on target, but just miss. The faster the lens, the faster you get on target, and the faster those little AF helpers come into play. 
This leads me to the second problem, and in my opinion, the biggest we experience with slower focusing glass, AF hunting and AF misses. In my opinion, this is the real problem with slower focusing lenses. When you see a bird coming in and focus and miss, the camera will run the range of the focus ring trying to lock on. Each one-way run with our sample lens, the 180 to 600, takes 0.8 seconds. So a single back and forth is over one and a half seconds with this sample lens, and that feels like an eternity when you're trying to lock on or regain a lock in a bird in flight scenario. Oh, and if it misses on that second pass as it's going back and forth, that's pretty much game over, especially with a slower focusing lens. We can also have a situation where the camera locks onto the wrong target, like the background, and then we're actually trying to pry it off that background and get it actually back onto our target. And even if we manage to coax it off the background, AF speed with slower lenses conspires to keep us from getting back on our target fast enough. As an adjunct to this, we also have what I like to call AF surprise. You have a perch bird that suddenly takes flight. At that moment, you're just starting to move the camera to keep up, so it stands to reason that your tracking isn't as smooth as it would be with a bird you've already been tracking for a moment. In addition, the camera's predictive tracking may be a step behind in a sudden takeoff scenario, depending on how fast it is. Combined, these factors mean that the camera may lose the lock for a moment and then have to regain it. Even over a short distance like that, I find a faster lens can make a difference here, although a major part of this is also how fast the camera itself is reacting to the situation. So it's really not just the brute speed of the lens's AF motor not keeping up with the subject. Most of the time, those initial lock-on, relock-on, and hunting moments are the ones that really take their toll. Thankfully, there are a few things we can do that help, and this applies to any lens from any brand, but it is especially helpful when using slower focusing optics. The first is simple. If your lens has a focus limiter, consider using it when you're confident the target won't wander closer than the range limited minimum focus distance. And you know what? That's gonna be the vast majority of cases. Most of the time, our target is out beyond the minimum focus distance of the lens when the limiter is engaged. In fact, I'm gonna prove just how valuable your focus limiter is because I know a lot of people don't tend to prioritize it. On our 180 to 600 example lens, the normal minimum focus distance at 600 millimeter is 2.4 meters or just under eight feet. With the limiter engaged, this changed to six meters or just under 20 feet or about the length of a typical half ton pickup truck. I think it's safe to say that most of us are not shooting the majority of our action at such a close range. Of course, it might seem like a difference of just 3.6 meters wouldn't have much of an impact on our focus times, but you have to remember that the lens moves the focus ring far more at close range than at a distance. In fact, I did some tests. Surprise, surprise, right? From minimum focus distance to infinity, the 180 to 600 takes about 0.8 seconds. I then did that same test with a focus limiter engaged and pointed the lens down to some grass that was just a little too close, causing it to set the lens to the focus range limiter distance of six meters. I ran the test again and came back with a focus range limiter to infinity time of just 0.417 seconds. Yep, it basically splits the time in half. And that's basically what I find with any lens from any brand. Switch on the focus range limiter and it'll run the focus range in roughly half the time it would without it engaged. So if you haven't been using a focus limiter, now's the time to give it a try. Just remember to flip it back to full range when you're done. The second piece of advice is equally simple, practice. The better you are at keeping your AF area on target and the better you are at keeping the subject in the same place in the viewfinder as you're panning along, the less likely it is that the camera's gonna drop the target. Third is pre-focusing. Keep your lens focused at about the distance where you expect your subject. And of course, I realize this isn't always possible since sometimes things just pop up, but I make it a habit to manually focus at about the right distance as often as I can. Even if I don't know for sure what that distance will be, I'll often focus out about 30 meters or so as a general kind of ready for action distance. Fourth is keeping the lens pre-focused just a little before your target when you can. 
One surefire way to latch onto backgrounds or cause hunting is to have your lens focused behind your subject when you engage AF. The lens will almost always focus out farther, causing it to land on the background or to start hunting if it's looking at a plain sky. By focusing just a little in front of your target, you increase the odds substantially that the camera will lock onto your intended subject and not just send the focal plane hurtling towards the background. I use this technique all the time and it really makes a huge difference. Fifth is using recall focus distance when appropriate. There are times, especially in focusing on close range subjects, that your lens is apt to lose the target and go to the background or start hunting. One trick I use on cameras and lenses that support this is to use my recall shooting distance feature, presetting my focus distance to about the same distance or slightly closer than where I expect my subject is going to be. Once set, I keep my finger on whatever button I use to recall my focus distance, which on my lenses is FN2 on the Nikons. And if the camera starts hunting or going for the background, I simply press that button and bring it back into range. I use this technique all the time with close range subjects like hummingbirds, for instance. The trick is, you're not using this technique to get perfect focus on the subject when you recall the shooting distance. You're just trying to get it back in the ballpark to give the AF system a chance to lock back on. This also works well when you have birds coming into a particular area or on a predictable flight path. For example, in Africa, we had skimmers flying along the same flight path each time, so I set my recall focus distance to some grass just in front of where they were flying, and when I saw them coming, or if the camera lost the lock, I just jumped back to that distance by pressing my FN2 button on my Nikon. Again, your button may vary. I, then I pressed the AF on button, locked right back on, and got the shot. See my bird and flight book for more details on how this works. The bottom line is that although it's undeniable that faster focusing lenses have their advantages, if you learn how to manage slower focusing optics, you can often enjoy the exact same results. You sometimes just have to work a little bit harder to get there. By the way, if you're a bird and flight fanatic like me, make sure you check out my ebook, Secrets to Stunning Bird and Flight Photography. This book is absolutely loaded with all the information you need to nail amazing bird and flight shots no matter what your camera brand. From gear to technique to artistic composition, it's all covered. I'll put a link for it in the description area on YouTube so you can check it out. Also, make sure you stop by the site and sign up for my free email newsletter and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of my videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.